In today's video, I wanna go ahead and hook up a buzzer. Now for this, I'm gonna be using a passive buzzer. And you can tell it's a passive one because you can't see the green circuitry on the bottom. It usually has like a black tape or a shiny black film on the bottom. I'm also gonna need two male to female cables. And of course, one Raspberry Pi. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. I'm using the Pi 3 in this case, but let's go ahead and get the buzzer hooked up. So right away, if you look at the top, we notice we do have a little plus sign. If we flip it over and we take a look at the pins, notice that one is longer than the other. That's the plus side, the positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into column E. And I'm gonna use the negative or the ground in column F. And I'm gonna put them both in row five. So they span this little gap here. Now in one of our pre, let me just check this real quick. In one of our previous videos, we went ahead and talked about the layout of the breadboard. So go ahead, watch that if you're not sure. But for a quick overview, the way this works is all of the rows work uh, horizontally. So if you plug something into, let's say 10, it can communicate with anything along the 10 until you reach the divide. And then the rails on the side here, they work vertically. So anything you plug in at the top will work with something down at the bottom. But with that said, I wanna go ahead and plug in one cable on the five in the left half, just so we can actually send a signal to make it buzz. And then I also need that ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug one in on this side where we have the ground. And let's plug that into the Pi. So to start off with, we gotta figure out where we're gonna be plugging this in. And I'll go ahead, turn it this way here so you can read a bit better. So I know I need a ground, so I'm just gonna use six. And I need some sort of GPI, GPIO pin to communicate with it. And I'm gonna use four, I use four a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my Raspberry Pi. And if we move this down a bit so you can see it a bit better. I need to go to the ground and to the GPIO. So ground is to six, which is the third one there. And GPIO four is the fourth one on this side. So there we go. We've got the circuit itself set up. Let's go ahead, we'll plug some power into this and head over to the desktop. All right, for this one, I've actually gone ahead and typed out the program ahead of time, but let me know if you like this format better. It does allow us to get through the video quicker. And I can still actually go over each line of code and exactly what it does anyway for you. So let me know below down in the comments and let's hit the code. So the first few lines should not be anything new to you. We're gonna go ahead and from the time library, import sleep, just so we can type sleep in some time. And then because we're using the GPIO pins, we have to make sure we go ahead and import those. And I'm importing my GPIO just so can we can ref reference them that way. Then I wanna go ahead and set my board up for the Broadcom. So we go ahead and do that here. We go ahead and set the mode. Then I have a few variables set up here. One is the buzz time, and that's how long each buzz is gonna be, its duration. Then we also have buzz delay, and this is how long we get between buzzes. Then of course, the GPIO pin that I'm gonna be using for my actual input for the buzzer, or I guess the output to the buzzer. In this case, I've gone ahead and stored that in a variable as well, just so if I wanna change it, I can, and it's only in one place. So I'm gonna use pin four. So I have to go ahead and set it up to tell it that pin four, in this case, I'm using the variable buzz, buzzer pin, make sure it's set up to be an output. So I'm sending a signal to it. Then just for a little bit of debugging, I'm gonna go ahead and print out a line that says buzz, and that's just gonna show up in my console. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna send a signal, which should be 3.3 volts to our actual buzzer pin, which is GPIO4, which should be the positive for the buzzer. So that's gonna make a buzzing sound. And it's gonna keep doing that for whatever we have our buzz duration for, in this case, a half a second. Then I'll go ahead and tell it to stop making the sound. And then we're gonna go ahead and delay for two seconds before the program ends. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm just going to go up to run, run module, and hopefully the mic picks us up. There we go. Kind of sounds like a smoke detector, doesn't it? And notice it took about two seconds before it ended over here. Great. So we can go ahead and make noise. Um, I forgot the cleanup, but that's fine. We'll get a little bit of a warning saying that we're using it, but that's fine. We, we know how to clear that out. And two seconds. There we go. 
So making noise, pretty simple. It's probably even easier than actually lighting up an LED. And since we're actually talking about LEDs, pause the video here. Well, in a second, pause the video. What I want you to do is go ahead and hook an LED up to this. I don't care what color. Uh, let me see, I have, a, I have a red one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook a red one up. And I want the red one to light up as well when the buzzer goes off. So it beeps for a half a second and your LED should also turn on for half a second. I don't want you to use any more GPIO pins. Just stick to the two that we have. And all you really should be adding to your breadboard is well, a resistor and the LED and the cabling in order to get that to work. So, so pause the video here, try to get that set up yourself and then come back. All right, so to hook the LED up, I'm gonna go ahead, unhook the signal in. I'm even gonna unhook the signal or for the ground. Now I'm gonna take my LED and remember the long pin is the positive one. So that means I want it in this side. I'm gonna come down to, let's say 15. And I'll do like before, I'll bridge the gap here. On 15. So we have the positive here and the negative there. We know we need a resistor or we could blow our LED. I'm gonna use a 220 for mine. So we'll go ahead, we'll bend it. And I've just gotta go from anywhere in this five row down to the 15. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead, take the negative. I'm actually just gonna plug it into the negative rail. We can take the positive. I'm gonna plug that into the positive rail. But before I do that, let's go ahead. We gotta make sure this is hooked up. So I'll jump across to the negative here. So from I to the negative rail, and I'll do the exact same thing here up on five. So we have the ground set up. And then actually I don't have another wire here on my desk. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and plug this into the row of five, so five A. I was going to plug it into the positive and then just have one jump from five on the rail over to five A. Either one would work. I think it'd look kind of cool if we did it the other way. But anyway, the way this works now is our signal is going to come in. It's on row five, so it's going to shoot across. So it's going to come across this resistor, which brings it down to 15. We have the positive plugged into 15. So that's gonna light the light up when it gets a signal. Then of course it comes out to the ground, which comes out to the ground rail, which goes ahead and just comes back out to the ground on the pie. But when the signal comes in, not only does it go to the resistor, but it's also gonna to go to the positive on our little buzzer here. And of course the ground buzzer, which is still in row five, but on the other half of the board is gonna go ahead and have its ground out to the ground rail, which again goes back to the ground on the pie. Now, if you want to control the volume on the buzzers, you can do it by adding resistors in between it. But for the particular buzzer that I have, it's gonna to have to be a pretty um, a pretty small resistor to actually still be able to get some sound out of it. I guess I could actually go ahead and use a five volt, but that's a different video. Let's go ahead and we'll try this out now. So now if I go ahead and hit run and we run it. There we go. We now actually have the light lighting up as well as uh, the buzzer. Now, for your assignment, what I want you to do is to go ahead, set up a loop, and I want you to do an SOS. And I want it to keep going until the user interrupts it. Let me go ahead and save this off. So something similar to this, but of course, you're gonna be using a loop, and you're gonna need to set up some sort of uh, dot and dash, at least for the delay. But when it runs, it should be pretty much the exact same as well, what we have so far. And there we go, the light should light up as well. So if you're in the classroom, well, get started. And if you're just watching the video at home, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>